What's up guys? Uh, back with another video. This is going to be a quick one. Um, very simple. This is just going to be on how to connect to your MicroLogix with a serial cable. Um, very simple and if you don't have one, if you're just going to try and rely on Ethernet all the time, um, I highly recommend you get one anyway. Um, it's much easier to set up, especially when you're setting the IP address on your MicroLogix. Um, when you do set up your IP address on the MicroLogix, you can either do it with the serial cable or you can use Alan Bradley's uh, Boot P um, program. And, but that can be a pain in the ass sometimes. So you just save yourself some trouble, save yourself some headache, uh, get a serial cable. Um, this is what the MicroLogix serial cable looks like. I'm, it's been a while, but correct me if I'm wrong, please. Um, I think all the MicroLogix cables are going to have the 90 degree bend in it um, right here. So yeah, um, this is the part that goes into your PLC. This is what will plug into your laptop or PC or whatever. Um, if you do not have a serial port on your computer, you're going to need one of these. Um, this is a serial to USB cable. Um, I'm now looking at this and this is not the best picture to represent that, but uh, pretty simple. You just want to get a serial to USB um, cable. So first thing we're going to want to do is open up RS links. And I think typically it's going to pop up automatically on the left. It's already there sometimes with the ABDF1 driver, but I deleted mine just so you can see how we create a new one and, and configure that. So you're going to want to click on the double headed snake and come to your drop down menu here and select RS-232 DF1 devices. Press add new, go with the default name and here's where you're going to configure that driver. So 90% of the time everything in here you're going to leave alone. Okay. I've never once had to change this. The things you do need to worry about is the COM port. So COM1 is usually for the serial port on your PC, your laptop, whatever. Okay. In this situation, I am not using COM1. I'm plugged into a USB port because I'm using a serial to USB converter. So my, in this instance, is actually on COM5. Now I'm going to show you what would happen um, if I use COM1 so you can see what a fail looks like. So after you select your port, you're going to come down here to auto configure. Press auto configure. And usually you know it's going to fail if it starts going slow like this. If you can read it, it's probably going to fail. Give it a second here. Okay, you can see here fail to find the baud and parity. Check all cables and switch settings. So you could have a bad cable, or you might just be on the wrong port. Or RS Links is just doing something stupid and you just need to restart your computer and try again. That is also very, very possible. Um, but in this case, I know that it's my COM port. So I'm going to come down here to COM5 and you'll see what it looks like when it's good to go. So I'll come here, select COM5, press auto configure, went really quick. Auto configuration successful. You can also see that it changed my device for me. I didn't have to go in there and select it. It selected it to the, the micro um, before we were on PLC channel zero, but when I configure it again, it changes it for me. Cool. So now we'll just press OK and close out of here and we can come over here to our ABDF1 network and yeah, look at that. We see it. It's uh, no red X's, no yellow X's with a question mark. We are good to go. Okay, so let's go into RS Logix now, now that we know that we've got a connection and that RS Links is seeing our MicroLogix. So we'll open up RS, uh, RS Logix and we'll go ahead and go to File, New. And it, our PLC is a MicroLogix 1100 Series B. I'm going to use the ABDF1 driver and we'll press OK. All right. So I'm just going to write some quick logic here. Oh my gosh. Okay. No, I do not want to use mnemonic code right now. So yeah, go ahead and just throw in a normally open and then a 
batch. And I'm just going to use uh, our memory files. So just B300 for our normally open contact and then B310 for our latch. Okay, come up here and verify it. It's happy. Now we'll just go ahead and save this. I'm going to save it as test. And now we want to go up here to comms and system comms. I'm doing this because I want to download to it, make sure I select the right processor. Um, there is already a program on the PLC and I want to go ahead and overwrite that program. So that's something you got to remember is whenever you download to these things, you're going to be basically wiping the original program that was on there already and replacing it with the one you just wrote. So be wary of that because if you do that, you better hope you had a backup copy of the last one if you made a mistake. That's why if you're making changes, it's always better to do it live if you have the ability to. That's also what's nice about the Micrologix 1100 is you can make live changes. And I, I guess I wasn't planning on doing that but I'll show you in this video. So first of all, yeah, we'll come over here to our ABDF1 network and it sees our PLC because it saw it in, micro, in the RS links. I'm ready to come over here to download. All right, so are you sure you want to proceed with the download? Yes. And the current project settings do not match. So I'm curious what Anyways, just select yes. Processor is in remote run mode. Yeah, we'll continue. Change was detected with Ethernet channel configuration. That's fine. I'm not using the Ethernet. And then we'll press OK and switch back to run mode. So yes. Go online. Yes. OK. So that works. So we downloaded our new program into our PLC. And we are currently live. You can see remote run is green and this is green and yeah we're, we're seeing everything live so um yeah that's how you do that that's how you connect that's how you download with serial with a serial cable um now if you want to ever edit uh your rungs if you ever want to make changes on the fly or troubleshoot something okay um, what you can do is you come over here and you can double click and this is the original rung right here that we're editing and then this is the the rung that we're editing with the changes that we're going to make so let's say we want to throw in um, a branch here and uh, put in a new contact so we can do that and come over here and we'll make this b30 slash one press ok and then we can actually come over here and just accept the rung edits you're going to then right click again and select test edits, select yes, and then you can go ahead and do assemble edits. And boom, now you made changes to your PLC program live. You didn't have to go offline, make the changes, and then download again. You did it while the PLC, while you were connected, which is super, super convenient. Um, but yeah, so then you can use this to like troubleshoot, right? Like, let's say this was like a physical IO contact. You can't toggle that, but you can add this in there and you can toggle this and turn on your latch, right? Toggle it off. And then when you're done troubleshooting or whatever you're doing, you want to change it back. You can just come in here and delete it, accept rung edits, test edits. Yes. That goes green and then assemble edits. And then, yeah, you're good to go. Cool. And that's it, really. Pretty easy, pretty basic.